Charlie, stand by. Detach. You have your moments. Not many of them, but you do have them. Hiya, welcome back to Twin Sons Miniatures. In this video we're going to be exploring how to paint Boba Fett's Fire Spray Gunship Slave 1 in the ILM style. And I suppose we should really start off actually by defining what the ILM style of painting actually is. Um, for me I would say it's using vintage hues applied mainly by an airbrush, although you can use brushes as well, in a manner that matches or replicates the techniques used by artists employed in the movie industry when creating film and miniatures. Before we get into all that though, I just want to take a wee moment and just explore the background of this iconic ship. So, you can see here from this screenshot, which is taken from episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Um, this was the first appearance of the the ship from a story point of view, uh, certainly in live action anyway. Um, at the time, it was owned by the Mandalorian Bounty Hunter and clone DNA donor Django Fett, um, who's also known as, as being Boba Fett's dad. Uh, it was said that the ship was a highly modified law enforcement vehicle and the lore also tells us that it was armed to the teeth and faster than most of the ships out there. So looking at this concept artwork, uh, a painting created by the Lucasfilm conceptual artist Doug Chang, uh, who I would incidentally consider as the Ralph McQuarrie of the prequel trilogy, uh, a much different paint job than we've seen in the original trilogy. Mainly grey, uh, with some blue and some yellow. This screenshot from the clip you've seen at the start of the video marks the first official public appearance of Slave 1 in the whole Star Wars lore. Um, it only ever actually appears in a few scenes in The Empire Strikes Back and is never again seen in the original trilogy. But like Boba Fett, it gained a cult following. Spoiler alert, after we found out that Boba Fett didn't actually die in Return of the Jedi, we next see him and his ship in Season 2 of The Mandalorian. And then I suppose more recently in the book of Boba Fett. Historically, the ship was known as Slave 1 in all the marketing and merchandise materials. However, more recently, Disney have elected to quietly drop the name amid some controversy. That's a debate I want to leave for another platform. So come with me in this journey. Discover how to paint this ship in original trilogy colours using some of the techniques used by ILM back in the day. Hope you enjoy the video. Right, so now that we've established a wee bit of the background of the ship, um, we'll get on with the actual painting of it. I decided uh, quite early on that when I was doing this video, that rather than actually go through the whole building process, I would really just start from the painting. Um, it's no different for any other model kit. Requires a bit of sanding and a bit of filling here and there. Um, just the usual things that you would expect to encounter. Um, so this is NPC's kit. Uh, which is part of Round 2 Corporation in America. Um, although it is an American kit, it is fairly easy to get your hands on here in the UK. Um, and I think to, I bought this one for Amazon, and it came in from America, and it cost roughly £40. Pounds. Um, and it was here within, I think, within the space of a week, maybe even less. Um, it's roughly one in 80 or 1 in 185 scale, it doesn't actually see in the box, um, but it's there or thereabouts certainly. Um, so here we are at primer stage, uh, I've done all the sanding and filling I think I'm going to do, um, 
and the primer I used is just my my standard go-to primer, which is this one here. It's just a multi-purpose grey primer. Fairly inexpensive, but I find very reliable for <coughs> excuse me for plastic models. Um, so the next stage is to get the the first base colour down. Um, which is going to be covering more or less all of the ship apart from the wing struts, the wings and the wells inside here um, we'll cover that as we move on so we're really going to be doing the shoulders, the main body and the skirt and the colour that we're going to use um, is this one Archive X DS Surface Grey or Death Star Surface Grey this is the, the shade of primer that was used in the the original uh, model that was made of the Death Star surface for the close-up shots at the end of A New Hope. Um, I don't know what the, the brand of the primer is, but that was the colour that they used. Um, Guy Cowan at Archive X has been able to source a screen-used tile, I believe. Um, I might be wrong here, but I believe he's been able to source a screen-used tile. Uh, and actually sample it and, and get the a, a match for the colour. Um, but incidentally, this colour was also used, the same primer was also used in the base of Slave 1. Now, uh, you don't see an awful lot of it, but you will see it parts um, with all the chipped away paint and the, the weathering and stuff, that you, you see that grey colour underneath. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how we're going to chip that paint as we, as we move forward. But the first thing we're going to do is get this colour down. So, the first stage of the base coating is complete. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, we have laid down all the Death Star surface grey. Um, also, on the underside as well, because predominantly the base colour under there is also that same colour. Um, we'll cover that at a later point, and you'll see what happens next with that. What I want you now to draw your attention to is the wings and the struts. They are base coated in this colour here, SP Armour Yellow. <clears throat> now if you look at any of the reference photographs of the, the original film and miniature, you'll probably quite quickly realise that the wings are not yellow. They are in fact white. It's a very, if you look at the the filming miniature, it's a very creamy white. Um, but you also notice there is some yellow markings and some various points, like in here, these grooves here and stuff. Now, that's achieved by using this very same colour. Now, what we then do is once we've got the yellow down, we use some of our liquid latex masking fluid to mask off the bits where we want to see the yellow. We then coat it with 1975 reefer white. It's not an absolute solid covering. It's quite a light layer. Uh, so you want to still see some of this yellow shining through. And what you're then left with is a really warm, rich, creamy colour. Um, and that's what, that's what you see on the wings and the struts of the original filming miniature. And that's how we achieve that look. So... We're now going to move on and do that part. Now that we've got the yellow down onto the wings and the struts, I felt like this was an appropriate time to just briefly step in for a moment and bring a couple of things to your attention. Yellow paint by its very nature is notoriously difficult 
to layer over a darker under colour. In order to get a way around this, we build up in layers. Um, if you just blob on a load of paint, yeah, you might get rid of the, the darker colour underneath, but you're going to clog up details and it's just not going to look great. So, nice thin layers, sprayed over or brushed over um, the one below, and just let the let, let each layer dry, or dry it with a hairdryer, and then just go on for the next one, and keep going, build it up until you get the level of opacity that you're looking for. Um, in this case, we actually don't mind a wee bit of the grey showing through because actually we're going for a weathered look in this ship so when you see dirt and grime and stuff you know it's all it's shining through for the layers below this was one of many techniques used by ILM to simulate or indicate weathering distress you know that kind of stuff dirt grease etc it's all based on building up in layers and that's what we're doing here building up in layers. Next layer is going to be a few blobs of the the masking fluid here and there um, and then we get the, the reefer white again built up in layers on top of that until we achieve that nice creamy colour. We're then going to strip back the masking fluid that we've applied and that will reveal the markings on the wings and the struts that we're looking to, to replicate here. So I've managed to dig out my reference images of the the filming miniature from Empire Strikes Back. Um, now, what I remembered um, was that this T section here on the underside, so this is the underside of the ship that you're seeing here, um, was also the same. This is also the same creamy white colour as the wings. So I figured, well, I better get that painted up as well. Uh, so I done. I've I've laid that yellow down as you can see. I've also done some of the engine parts as well. Maybe you know, the, the the bells and the, this long thingy bit here. Whatever. I don't know the technical name of that is. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll come back to those those these three main parts of the engine uh, at a later point. Just want to just look at this just now. So this part obviously here, creamy white, the same as that. We've got that down. Um, I've also managed to. You can see the this is the one side of the wings, this is the other side. Uh, I've been able to put down the masking fluid to make these parts. You'll see some of these areas here uh, are, are the yellow's coming through, but it's misting over, so we'll need to bear that in mind as we're laying our reefer white down. Uh, but we'll cover that as, as we go. Um, again, there's some marks here as well, so we just uh, we just have to bear that in mind. But I've I've added some masking fluid, which should be now dry or near enough dry, uh, and we should be ready to start putting the reefer white down. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. So this is, as I say, the reference pictures that I use. Uh, I also have another couple of reference pictures here of that I've managed to get off online. Now these are not the original filming miniature, these are studio scale models however uh, I'm not sure what model kits they are or, or uh, if they're completely scratch built or if they're one of the other Gary's kits that some of the guys do um, but I believe, I don't, if I don't believe, I know for a fact these ones were painted by uh, John Simmons um, John Simmons, as I, I've spoken about him before in my videos, very very talented artist and it was the guy who I really learned just through watching his YouTube videos is how I learned to kind of do this, this technique and seen some of the other people as well they discuss how ILM painted and this is really how I learned it so I'm just sharing it as well for anybody else that don't get me wrong I'm not as good as these guys no, but I'm a long stretch of the imagination uh, and I'm sure they know a lot more than I do still um, but you know I'm just passing on what I've learned anyway uh, so I do use these images as well, but primarily I stick to the, the original filming miniature. Um, I'm not trying to replicate it. I, mean, I should have said, I'm not trying to make an exact carbon copy of it, but I'm trying to replicate the general idea 
look at where the colours are, what, pick what colours uh, I've got in my, on, on my board here uh, and, and try and apply them where I think they fit. Um, I'll probably get a few bits or most of it wrong, but uh, it's my interpretation of the images. That's that's the whole thing about art, isn't it? It's people's own interpretation. Uh, I'm not trying to faithfully recreate the exact carbon copy of the miniature, uh, as, I, as I said, but we do want it to look a bit like it, so hence why we're using this. Uh, but John's John's versions uh, are absolutely just incredible, uh, and are also a very very good visual guide for you know some of the patterns and the chipping and even the weather and stuff like that as well. So thanks, John. <laughs> uh, anyway, so moving on. I'm hoping that I have achieved what I set out to do. I did get a bit carried away myself when I unmasked it all and just got stuck right into further misting the bits that had been masked off. Um, instead of filming it and showing you, I just got a bit excited and just went with it, as I often do. Uh, you'll see the yellow here and there. This part here. I've managed to replicate that. And then, of course, this part here is also right here. So I masked that off as well, it's the same as the other side. Uh, but then put a heavy misting coat over the top of that so that some of the yellow is still shining through, as you can see in the reference photograph. Uh, but it's much more muted as opposed to its opposite number. Uh, if I flip it round, I've also added in the red stripe here, now my red stripe is probably more red than brown whereas that one looks a bit more brown, I don't know how they achieved that potentially probably using the boxcar red a bit more than I put a wee layer of caboose red down and realised it was too red uh, so I put a bit of boxcar red on top of it I'm not sure if that's altered I think it probably has altered what's shining through but I'm not going to get my knickers in a twist about it um, because there'll be more weather getting added, so we'll see how it goes. There's a few stains and stuff on the wings, but uh, I'm not going to be doing that just now. That'll be that'll be done in the, in the wider weathering pass at the end. Uh, it's just really this is just about mainly laying down the, the colours at the moment, or the main colours. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would say I think I've probably achieved that nice creamy white colour. Um, it will show up probably a lot better once we start adding the colours in. It's really sitting there against the start grey of the main body just now. Uh, so we'll just get steamed in. And I think what we'll probably do is start on the skirt next. My absolute favourite part. You bring in the Aurora pink uh, and the boxcar red and you just build them up in layers. I just get off excited when I do this part of the, the build. It just it looks fab. Uh, anyway, so moving onwards. Right, sorry, I just wanted to take a brief moment to just quickly talk about masking and masking tape. Uh, an essential bit of kit when you're using an airbrush, stops over spray, helps you create nice neat tight lines for panels and stuff like that. Uh, the brands that I use are Frog Tape, which is a, a standard painter's tape. Um, probably a bit more expensive, it's one of these kind of branded types. Uh, but it is very good quality, you, you know, you pay for what you get, you get a good adhesion, uh, this is a delicate surface variety, so it doesn't rip up the, the, the acrylic paint that you've put down, and uh, it's very good at stopping paint actually seeping underneath, you know, underneath the tape and creating lines and, you know, breaking up the line that you're trying to create, especially if you want a nice neat straight line, then it's essential that the paint doesn't do that. 
a wee tip for you if you are masking an area off and you want a nice straight line, nice, you know, without any bleed, you can actually put down a layer of paint along here, along the line, to actually stop the paint actually bleeding through. So you would use the colour that's already existing there. In this case, it would be Death Star Surface Grey. So I would just go along there with the airbrush, paint down here. But let that dry and that then creates a seal so you can then add the next colour on top uh, and it's a, it's, it's a very good way of, of really preventing that bleed through uh, the other brand of tape that I use is Tamiya, uh, this is the 6mm variety, yep 6mm and I've also got a 10 here, very good tape uh, again, good adhesion without all that issues with the you know, with the paint getting lifted up as you're as you're unmasking it and uh, Again, the bleed through and stuff like that. You get nice tight lines with that as well. This is also Tamiya's tape. This is their flexible version. So this allows you to then follow curves and contours. Uh, again, good adhesion. No issues with the surface uh, or damaging the surface that it's sticking to. And allows you to create lines uh, that curve and follow contours, as I said before, without actually having to you know, cut pieces of tape stick it and then cut another bit move around uh, and you don't get that sort of jagged effect if, if that makes any sense uh, this is the female variety it's the one I tend to use for this type of tape but it does come in, come in other sizes and variations so uh, that was all I just wanted to say hope that's of use to you I think I've covered this in other videos and I'll probably cover it again for other videos but just wanted to jump in if it, it felt relevant at this point so, as we just discussed, application of a wee bit of Death Star Surface Grey just helps seal the paint, eh, sorry, seal the tape, and that just prevents any paint leaking through and makes the, the overall finish look a bit better, and also I can pick up some of those areas where I did get some overspray where I should have masked off previously learn from my mistakes <laughs> right that seems to be about it we'll get that to dry off and then we'll get started right this is where the fun really starts to begin uh, we're going to start applying the liquid masking fluid to the skirt I showed you this before it's just a colourless art masking fluid. Uh, this is a brand, Windsor Newton, to make paints and various different things. But various, o uh, various other model making companies like Vallejo and stuff make their own version of that. It's just the same stuff. It's just a liquid latex. Uh, the Vallejo ones tend to this a bluey green colour, uh, which helps you see it better in the model. This stuff dries colourless, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. But that's what it is. Uh, anyway, so... You can see with the reference photograph all the sort of chipped areas. So that's what we're going in to start replicating. Uh, to do that, as I say, we use that masking fluid and we use one of these, uh, which is a silicon tipped uh, brush. I think they're used for uh, sort of modelling clay and, and various stuff like that. I actually picked that tip up off of a... Uh, John Simmons also, uh, I've seen him using them, I thought that's a great idea how to apply it. The other thing you can use is this as well. So it's just a piece of sponge. It's not, a lot looks like a natural sponge, it's actually a synthetic one made to look like a natural sponge. I don't really so, you know, subscribe to using uh, a bit of dead animal to paint, you know. Anyway, uh, I suppose you could argue that about paintbrushes as well, right enough, couldn't you? But uh, I'm quite protective of sort of marine creatures but anyway that's another story so that's a uh, just a piece of sponge and we can use that to create a random pattern of uh, splodges and whatever so we just dip that in there and we start to just apply it so oh, I just knocked that over so let's just go with this piece here so we've got that vent there and if we just start to build up Make sure you change the direction of your sponge each time you dab to avoid creating a, 
a pattern, a repeating pattern, sorry, because this is supposed to be random. And so we're looking for that to to be replicated in the overall effect. I don't know how well I'm doing that on camera, actually, if you can see that or not, but it's probably a bit much, actually. Now, because, obviously, as I said, we're creating a random pattern, we're not we're actually going to replicate the exact tiny marks that were created on the original film and miniature because, well, it's all random really, isn't it? But that being said, we'll have a good crack at it and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So I'm not going to bore everybody to tears by showing you the whole thing bit by bit, but that's that's the general idea how we use the sponge. We can then come in with a silicon tip brush uh, and just get a wee bit of that on the end here. And what you can then do is just follow up the contour of the, the panel lines and just start applying wee dots and build that up. You can then... Uh, Manoeuvre it round about to create random patterns or random looking patterns. Uh, and just give us the overall feel of what ILM actually done with the original model. Just a wee bit at a time. I know this video is probably rabbiting on a wee bit, but... I really wanted to document the whole process of painting this model because it's such a great build. Uh, I was really pleased with how my last one turned out. And so I just wanted, wanted to share this with people. Uh, feel free to obviously skip through various parts and, you know, that's cool. Just take away, take away from what this video, what you need, what you want. Hopefully, there's something there for everybody. Anyway, we get the general idea. Uh, the layout, of some of these greeblies on this is quite different from the original model, so we'll just have to go with it. And uh, you know, I'm sure it'll work. It'll turn out. All good in the end. Anyway. Right, that should be enough of that. And what we'll do is, I'll continue, I'll finish off the rest of the model and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the paint colour choices next. Right. We've got the, the first coat of the the masking fluid down. That's all nice and dry. I've mixed up some Aurora Pink and a wee splash of Dark Reefer Grey just to take the harshness, the brightness off the pink. Although it will get further misting eh, with the weather coats later. But, you know, just to take the absolute harshness off the pink, we have added a wee bit of the grey. Now... This is just a, a light coat. We're not going really, really heavy with this. Uh, we just want to build up the colour. And then what will happen after that is we will have to reapply more of the masking fluid. Some folk are probably watching this thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? Why is he painting? Boba Fett's ship pink it is the pink, no you're absolutely right it's not, but it's almost like a primer coat that's underneath the main red of this part of the ship uh, or a faded paint that was on there before if you look at the reference uh, <coughs> excuse me and then we apply a wee bit more of that chipping fluid and then we get the red on the top. And so you're actually only seeing wee bits of the pink 
Uh, it's an absolutely brilliant effect. It has a really nice uh, finish to it. So I'll just crack on with this and we'll come back just shortly. Right, so we're back. The, the pink is now dry. And what we're doing is we're going back in with the latex and we're starting to just add a bit more to where we've already put the latex down but then cover it in the pink. And then what that's going to then do is create masked off areas with the pink so that way when you finally reveal it all off, you will reveal the grey underneath, parts of the pink, and then you'll be left with the rest of the red that's on the top. That's the theory. So what we'll do is... I'll just go on about this doing exactly what I've just said and you will be able to see all the different parts of the pink shining through with the red now again like I said I'm not going to spend all my time going over all this And you have to sit and watch it because it's bloody boring. So leave it with me and I'll be back shortly. Okay, and we've come to put, finally putting on the top coat, the boxcar red. Uh, a very, very uh, Star Wars-y colour, if that makes any sense. A real, real retro feel to it. Very vintage colour. Uh was sought after for many, many years by a lot of model makers uh, and guys who uh, make the Boba Fett armour and, and, and particularly the helmets. The T-visor at the front uh, is also this colour. I believe uh, it's a very, very rusty brown sort of shade to it, if that makes any sense. Uh, just... Really suits this model well. It's a lovely colour. So what I'm going to do is I'll apply this, uh, and then I'm acutely aware that this video is now starting to run on a bit. So I think what I'm actually going to do is once I've painted this, that's the end of the video. But it's the end of this part, and there's going to be another part, uh, and it will be continuing on with the rest of the model. It's just going to be far too long. Uh, I've got enough rubbish to talk uh, that would last hours and hours and I don't think anybody's going to want to watch that. So this will be the kind of first part of the paint video. So if you want to see the big reveal about what this is going to look like next, you have to watch the next part of the video. Right, that's the main uh, colour down on the, the skirt, boxcar red. If you've got this far in the video, thanks very much for sticking with it and watching it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, add some comments below, like, subscribe, you know, ask questions, contact me uh, via my Instagram page or even on you know Facebook or uh, on, on YouTube. Uh, and feel free to ask any questions or if you've got any hints or tips or whatever. Uh, but love to, lovely to hear for you. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next part for the big reveal of what this actually looks like. Cheers to it. If you want to see more Star Wars videos from my dad, smash that like button and subscribe.